I cannot wait to get my hair done. All right, all right. Hello, beautiful women of Empower Hour. I am so excited to see you today. And, uh, and so is Miss Jen. So glad to see my beautiful friends and all the beautiful women that I know that are on the call already. Thank you so much for being with us today. I am thrilled to introduce our speaker today. Her name is Carolyn McGraw. And she is a she does a lot of amazing things. She's a coach for um, children and youth. She does a lot of coaching in all different uh, ways. She's also phenomenal when it comes to the world of um, uh, spiritual wellness. She's uh, great. She's really good at uh, hypnotizing. I don't remember what that's called, Carolyn. Is it hypnotizing? Hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy. That's what it was. Yeah, she did it with me and she helped me with some serious breakthroughs. So she's amazing. Um, so a little bit about her and what we're going to talk about today is um, seven habits of spiritual wellness, how to live a soul-centered life, find out what is interfering with your divine blueprint, and gain a spiritual toolkit to help you break through the self-sabotage cycle. And I don't know about you, but I need to hear this today for sure. So welcome and thank you so much, my beautiful friends. And I am so excited to hear Ms. Carolyn McGraw. So here we go, my friends. Go ahead, Carolyn. Hello, everybody out there. Nice to connect with you on this Wednesday. Um, I'm Carolyn K. McGraw, and I went from being a school teacher to a TV host. And I had an audience of 30 million viewers. Cool. So you're wondering, how did that happen? Yeah, so I'll tell you my little formula uh, was to first listen to my heart, follow my intuition, say yes to an opportunity, and take a big risk and get way out of my comfort zone and and doors open for me doors opportunities connections and people just by following my my heart my intuition saying yes and that is my formula for getting into your purpose getting uh into your passion using your gifts and talents so um my show is called Life on Purpose, and you can see um, the episodes on the app, free app, Women on TV, and I interviewed entrepreneurs and how they found their passion and their purpose, and I was fascinated to know what was that thing, that, that their story, that uh, incident that led them to do what they do, and I found the same answer over and over again, and that was trials and tragedy that led people to what they were meant to do. And so I loved hearing the stories and sharing, sharing with others, um, you know, a message of inspiration of how to turn our, our blocks into blessings. So um, I want to share with you today uh, how um, kind of where I'm going and why spirituality is so important to me. And that is, um, it's suicide prevention week. And um, I, it was a year ago that I was at an event. Uh, in fact, there was some famous celebrities there from Shark Tank and uh, TV hosts and actresses. And uh, I'm listening, I'm in the audience and all of a sudden my intuition said, which is God talking to us, right? Our intuition uh, is saying, she, she's gonna call you on stage. Forbes Riley, a TV host. Uh, actress and I said oh no <laughs> I, my heart's racing and what do you know she came right down to the audience pulled me up on the stage and uh, in front of hundreds of people and she um, actually like took me through this little process of getting to the heart of the matter and she asked me the question what do you want and my first answer was you know to be wealthy I think and then and she says what do you really want and then I said, I want to help people. And then she said, what do you really, really want? You know, getting deeper. And I'm starting to get kind of emotional. And words came out of my mouth and it shocked me and surprised me. I didn't realize this, but I said, I want to prevent teens from committing suicide. And I was like, really? I didn't know that. But it, she got deep and got it out. And, um, you know, it was an emotional experience. And... Um, then when I sat down, there was a man next to me and says, here's my wife's card. She is the suicide prevention, um, of Sacramento. I should talk to her. 
So, uh, so I'm on this path. It was not something that I was choosing uh, necessarily, but God was choosing me for this. So what has happened now is I've created the hope and wellness um, for families in an inspirational message and um, tips and tools to improve emotional well-being. And that is happening. This Saturday, we're doing a virtual retreat, and it's going to be in our Facebook group called uh, Hope and Wellness Events. And I'm inviting everyone to um, connect, to be a part of that. It's going to be at, at 10 a, uh, 11 a.m. It's a free event, and it's tools to deal with our emotions. It's, um, you know, how to to prevent getting to that really depressed spiral where we can't seem to get out of. And so I've gathered a lot of speakers that have had experience with uh, either someone they know who has committed suicide or um, they have uh, attempted that. And so it's going to be um, really an amazing event. And uh, like I said, I, I'm not in charge. I'm not, you know, it's not, it's coming from above. And um, so if you know anyone struggling, you know, let, invite them in. So, um, and, and you know, that goes into our, my topic is um, people that are in that depression, in that suicidal thoughts are spiritually disconnected. So that's why I want to talk about how to get spiritually connected. And I just wanted to ask the ladies here, what does spirituality mean to you? How do you define that? What does that mean to you? Anyone want to share? Okay, <laughs> that's all right. Okay, so. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell you what spirituality means, and then maybe you can jump in. I I, I want to be open and have a conversation, and not me just speaking to you. But um, so I, I welcome your um, comments, and I can't see the comments. So uh, Jennifer, you can let me know if there's questions or comments and if anyone has anything. No, so no, nothing so far. Okay. So um, today I want to um, talk about things that pull us out of our spiritual alignment. Um, I want to teach you how to boost your spiritual um, well-being and um, learn the things that are uh, interfering and the things that are blocking your blessings. So spirituality is asking questions. Why am I here? What am I doing? It is about a, having a desire to learn more. And uh, it is about fostering that inner connection to our own spirit and also a higher power and living from the values and beliefs that we have in, in, a, in daily routine of how we think and feel and behave. So Anyone have a, a thought on that, that on a different take on spirituality or how they feel they get in tune to their spiritual self? I feel like, you no, know, I think some of that was, was, you know, pretty good, um, you know, spot on. Um, you know, I think I really do. I, I, for me, spirituality is um, definitely that encompassed with um, one of the things I was, and for me, because spirituality for me, Ha, does have it is intertwined with my faith and so um for me it it's that deep rooted movement it's almost like um for me it compares to um it's my it's my action it's my un, un it's my non physically being able to see action it's the movement kind of like god's holy spirit is his movement right so for me my spirituality is it's able to calm me it's able to get me excited it's able to Kind of help control my emotions if that makes sense yes yeah i agree i agree and that and that's what i'm going to be uh focusing in on how to uh, manage our emotions um through spiritual tools it's a spiritual toolkit so um how would you rate i want you to think about how you would rate your spiritual well-being on a scale of one to ten think about that and, and we're going to look at what, what interferes, 
with that and that that spiritual virus the spiritual virus is negativity is fear is worry is criticism is busyness is distractions and unforgiveness and ignoring our own signals from our body and our heart leading us to do something and we're ignoring that so all these things interfere and get in the way and get us off balance and so some of the symptoms from those things are anxiety depression uh, and pain and if we get an overload uh, on our spiritual um, immune system we have a spiritual immune system as well as a physical it lowers and actually i wanted to tell you that that your spirituality uh, spiritual wellness is the key factor in your emotional and physical well-being and that our body knows more about our spiritual well-being than our mind does. So we are not our mind. We are not our thoughts. We are here. We are in the spirit self, in the heart, next to the heart, the spirit heart. This is, this is where the truth is. This is where, where we reside. We are not here. We are here. And, and around 13 years old, around hormonal time, um, kids start to make that switch to, into I'm here, everything in my mind. And they lose that childlike way of truth and um and we get stuck in our heads that inner critic and that is another thing that gets us off balance so carolyn i have a question since you said we yes. had a discussion on this yes when you talk about the um the, you know you lose your you start to do more thinking at that point would you also consider that maybe a loss of some kind of an innocence um from childhood because as children we uh, we really are innocent in so many things because we go with feelings and you know in the moment versus oh let's stop and think about this we're not mature enough to do that so i feel like that's just losing some of the just honestly innocent decisions that children make yes very good point jennifer and yes it's it's the influence of our environment it's the social media um that the is and you know i literally believe like the uh the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder and those those critical thoughts are coming from that adverse influence and the positive and, and so we start to identify with what's wrong with me i'm not good enough and those thoughts lead into um yeah losing that innocence like you said losing that so if left unchecked it can go into the, a disease called the self-sabotage disease and you know all those things that prevent us from reaching our goals and our dreams so see which one of these you suffer from these ailments procrastination substance abuse turning to food for comfort and um, those things are pull us off our balance get us um in our heads more and out of our heart. So let's dive deeper into that. So that is stemming, those things stem from lack of self-worth, from uh, fear of success. Some of us uh, are dealing with that. I know that's one, that's been one of mine of, what if I get too busy? What if it's too much responsibility? Uh, I just kind of want to play on this lower level, but I'm being called to a higher level. Um, Self-defeating thoughts we talked about, and also not prioritizing self-care, that we put everyone else above us, that we take care of everyone else and we're, we're last on the list and then we're too tired to take care of ourselves. And then one more, that uh, prioritizing uh, instant gratification, where we just want it right now, so we're just gonna make ourselves feel better, self-soothing, and we use different things to distract us, keep us busy, keep us from going where we know we're meant to go. So all those things um, interfering with purpose and our, our soul keeps trying to lead us to our purpose. And, you know, tragedy is the express elevator to spirit, the spirit realm. Um, and we have things happen in our life to wake us up, to remember, you know, who we really are. I, I love this quote by Walt Whitman. He said, Re-examine everything you've been told and dismiss what insults your soul. If your prayers are not being answered, it means that there's something that needs to be released. It could be the anger, the resentment, the blame, the criticism, the grief even, uh, all that 
that emotion interferes with uh, receiving blessings and hearing the truth and receiving inspiration. So my dream was to be a motivational speaker. And when I announced this uh, to my family, they said, oh, well, you can't do that. You know, the naysayers uh, saying, you don't have a, a, a traumatic story. You don't have a tragedy. Um, I had had a pretty easy life. I, I you know, uh, didn't really have a major story. And, and, you know, you have to have that major story, that tearjerker to, to be a motivational speaker was what we, I was being told. But shortly after um, unraveling of my story came, the dark night of my soul. And that was going through a very, very um, traumatic divorce uh, where I ended up losing the relationship with my son for 12 years. And I tried everything humanly possible going through the court, psychiatrists, counselors, um, everything didn't work. Everything I tried didn't work. And I would call, he would hang up. I would send letters, he didn't get them. Uh, and I, I it, the pain was so much, my heart, it was just breaking into pieces. My firstborn son um, rejected me and didn't want me in his life. So I, I went to counseling and that did help, but I was still pretty depressed. I was still pretty a mess and not getting any results and i was i was discouraged and i discovered hypnotherapy and in my first session i was blown away with the amount i felt like i i released a lifetime of emotional baggage i learned to tap into my own self-love that i never knew how to do that i don't think anyone teaches us how to do that, how to fill our own love and our own resources and our own wisdom within. And that's the power that I learned in hypnotherapy. And it also helped to start to uh, repair the, the, the pain in my heart. And another thing, it um, helped me stop being so needy. You know, when we go through, you know, something traumatic, you know, we have that needy energy. I need so, something, I need someone to fill me up and we're, we're not looking inward or upward even for that. And so um, after that, I, I felt like the next day I had lost 10 pounds of emotional weight. Actually, my clothes were looser. And people are even noticing that. Yeah, it looks like you lost weight overnight. And that's our, our emotions weigh us down. Uh, it affects our health. It affects our relationships. It affects our everything in our life. So, uh, of course, I decided to become a hypnotherapist. And when I, and I'm a Christian, I do, I use Christian values in hypnotherapy and people, I, I find so many are really nervous about it. Um, it's not stage hypnosis. It's not mind control. It, it is, um, it's powerful. So people are unsure, you know, how it works. So it, it got lumped in with some uh, negativity. Um, but what it really is, is um, relaxing the mind, getting that inner critic out of the way. It's relaxing the body. It's a guided imagery with positive suggestions, tapping into the power of the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is really our soul. It's our spirit. And it has so much wisdom. It has so much uh, resource there to tap in. It's long-term memory. It's your intuition. It's your personality. And that's what the hypnosis is, is getting you um, tapped into that place, which you can kind of get into in a meditation, but this is um, taking it to the next level. So when I'm, when I'm working with clients, I found I'm talking to their soul. This is, this is incredible. It feels very heavenly. It feels very joyful to be connecting on that kind of level, having that kind of conversation. So um, back to my story, I uh, became a head of therapist, helping people with addictions and helping people with relationships, forgiveness, um, their goals, reaching their goals very quickly uh, when you're tapping and making changes um, with, with the tools. Uh, so I, I'm, I have a business and I, I had to work on letting go. My son wasn't ready to come back into my life. So I, I got remarried 
and I had another child and still he didn't want to be any, any part of my life. So it, you know, say years later, years later after that, uh, I received a phone call and I heard a man's voice say, hi mom. And it was the first time I heard my son's voice in 13 years. And we began to make the steps to repair our relationship and heal. And um, I know that my spiritual tools got me through in one piece. Uh, prayer, faith, and hope. It gave me the patience. It gave me the strength. It gave me the ability to find my gifts and talents and that I could turn around and help others uh, who were suffering from their children, uh, maybe uh, being turned away through them through divorce or challenges with relationships in any way. I learned unconditional love. I learned forgiveness. So I can say I'm grateful for the experience <laughs> and the struggles <laughs> and the pain um, because it has put me on a path where God wants me to be. And I so much want to help others um, that there is a way to end the struggle. There's a way to cope in healthy ways. There's a way to avoid depression and anxiety. There is a way to um, connect and uh, feel joy. And so I want to bring that message of hope to people. And that's how I do it with uh, life coaching and the hypnotherapy. And I have found that there's so many blessings in our trials and there's beauty in our pain. And uh, it's a refining fire. It's, it's our soul trying to get us to learn those life lessons to strengthen us so that we can serve and bless others. So a uh, spiritual toolkit that I have gathered and I want to share with you and maybe you have some ideas too. So first of all, it is making time to work on ourselves, to have the time and space to say, you know what, there is something, I, there's some anger, there's some grief that I haven't fully um, healed from. It's still affecting me and uh, to reach out for help. To, uh, to clear this from your life, otherwise you stay in that self sometimes self-sabotage cycle. So making the time to let go of your past, those people that have hurt you, and to do the emotional homework, as I say. And, and so you need time. You need uh, time alone. You need to self-reflect. Uh, meditation, prayer, um, inspirational um, reading, uh, anything that inspires you. Stephanie, you were saying you listen to some inspirational music that helps you feel um, when you're not feeling well, that that's a tool that you're using to get you in that vibe of connecting um, higher. Also building a community of friends, uh, like-minded friends that are there to support you. We have to reach out. We have to speak up and we, we you know, it's empowering to say, hey, I need some help. Uh, and just having someone there. And that's what I'm finding a lot of really depressed people that are suicidal. They're the ones not asking for help. They're not sharing their feelings. They're not reaching out and they're just suffering. And that's the message is we've got to reach out. We've got to look for those who need, um, need us, just a listening ear, a shoulder to cry on. And so other things uh, is um, being in nature. Uh, nature is truth. Na nature speaks truth. And then we could feel um, our spiritual um, connection in nature very easily. Music also and journaling. Journaling, getting our thoughts and feelings out of us and on paper is like, it's free therapy, 24-7 therapy to get it out somewhere. If you're talking or if you're writing, it is a very healthy way. You know, we hear about kids cutting. Um, they're, they're, they're numb. They're not feeling it. If they could speak it, if they could write it, if they could create something and channel their emotion and their feelings into um, a dance, music, um, you know, a craft, uh, a painting, something to get it out and, and express it. That's the most important thing I, I find. And, and healing sessions. What, there's so many different wonderful modalities of healing and um, body work, massage and different kinds of body work also help us let it go from our tension in our muscles. 
So any comments so far? Anyone have anything they want to share? Yeah, I think I'm definitely what you said before about the self-sabotage thoughts and the instant gratification. That's definitely something that probably the top of the list I have to work on. Like I'm always working on those two because oh, my mind always goes to like the negative with everything. Yeah. Right. So this that, is not my background. Yeah. So it's just flipping that switch to, you know, say, Oh, there's that negative thought again. I'm going to go into gratitude. That's my number one tool. Go into gratitude. What am I grateful for? And it switches that and, and it ups your vibe and it tunes you in. Um, because I know that one thought, like you're talking about, I know if I go there, I'll, I'll spiral down and I'll be in that depressed state and uh, it ruins my day. And uh, when I stop the thought, so it's uh, the awareness, uh-oh, here comes the thought, roadblock, put a roadblock, I'm not going there today. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful I have a job. I'm grateful my family's healthy. And then I, it stops it. It just stops it right in its track. So gratitude. Yeah. All right. And, and thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Anyone else? Something I found very interesting, uh, Carolyn, is, um, you know, because I've done hypnotherapy with you before, and you know I had a pretty traumatic past. And so um, I thought I had kind of let everything go before I went into hypnotherapy, quite honestly. I was like, ah, I got this. Like, it's good. And I was a little afraid you were going to turn me into a chicken for the day or something, right? Um, but then I learned that that's not the case at all, right? It's, it, it was not exactly what I anticipated, but it was actually way better because it was able to help me to overcome some internal struggles that I didn't know I was continuing to have after this many years. And with hypnotherapy, I was able to kind of overcome a lot of my fears. Um, and so I have to say like, based off of the hypnotherapy, the, the regular therapy I've had, the, um, the, um, spiritual, uh, I don't want to say battles, it's not the right word, but the spiritual uh, gains that I've had over the years and, and finally feeling like I'm, I'm heading in a really positive direction definitely makes me feel um, like a more, um, I don't know, whole person, I guess is a way to put it. I don't feel as broken as I, I used to feel, which is really great. Um, and, I, and I do love helping people, but I have to learn that it can't be at the cost of my own health. And a lot of people know that I will do everything for everyone else and then be like, oh yeah, Steph, you got to remember to eat. It's been five days or whatever, you know? Um, so, you know, that is, that's sometimes a hard thing to, to uh, remember is ourselves, right? Is, is not just taking care of everybody else, but also taking care of ourselves in the process. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a topic that was really appreciated. And thank you so much for, um, for uh, all of the things you've said so far. You've been amazing. Oh, thank you. So I've got this. This is like my little motto, breathe into gratitude and something wonderful is about to happen. So switching that negative thought into that positive thought um, and just expecting miracles. I kind of have this miracle Monday that I intend I'm going to have some miracles today. I tell people it's miracle Monday. And what do you know, every time really amazing things happen that I didn't expect that surprise me uh, for my wonderful wonderful things coming. So I want to share now the seven habits of spiritual wellness. And they are uh, having that daily routine of spiritual connection time. If that's through quiet alone, uh, through contemplation, through meditation, through journaling, through just breathing, just taking some deep breaths. And um, you know, looking at, you know, what's really important to me? What's, what's the most important thing for today? And the next one is the gratitude, expressing gratitude. And I want to tell you, gratitude is more of a mental thing. You know, we're supposed to say thank you and be grateful, but appreciation is more of a heart, spiritual thing. Appreciation is uh, really takes you to that high vibe that I, I like to stay in. That's what I call my spiritual realm is that high vibe and anything I can do to keep me, keep me in that positive um, place. And that um, the vibration of, appreci uh, of appreciation is the most profoundly important frequency to hold on to because it's the closest thing to cosmic love that exists. So God's love. Um, when, and you, you could just be walking down the street and flowing appreciation to the flower, to the tree, to the neighbor, uh, and just 
that is that that will put you at the top if you're you know if you're feeling negative if you're feeling anxious and depressed and you just start appreciating what's right in front of you that is better than a pill right that's better than any antidepressant pill you could have just getting into that appreciative thought all right next is thinking and speaking positively speaking about what you want not what you don't want focused on solutions so um, positive people think positive thoughts. Uh, so keeping awareness of our thoughts and what we're speaking. And I find I get to a point where I can't even be around people that are negative um, uh, thinkers and speakers. It just brings me down and I just cannot be around it. So I'll say, well, what are you grateful for today? All right, the next one, gra graceful acceptance of what is. Example, my son didn't want to be in my life. He didn't want to um, talk to me. I had to accept it. It took a long time, but I had to accept it. That is what he, where he's at. I can't force it. Um, and so I had to do that letting go and just be patient and wait till he was ready. So there's things in our life we can change. There's things we can't change. So having that graceful acceptance of what is. And then practicing unconditional love. Uh, our, our children teach us this. And um, it's like, I love you no matter what. No matter what you do, I still love you. And not holding that condition. And having that for ourselves, that self-compassion for ourselves, practicing that. And living a life of purpose and meaning. You know, what are you doing the things that you love to do? Are you doing the things your heart wants to do? Are you addressing that? Are you ignoring that? Trying to make everyone happy, do everything, and putting yourself last. And then you're, you're, you're unhappy with your life because you're not doing what you really want to be doing. Uh, so looking at that and, and finding a way to do that, what you love, your passion, maybe what you used to do when you were younger and, and picking that up again, um, developing a new talent. And the last one I'm going to talk about is forgiveness. This is the biggest blessing blocker. This is the biggest interference of our health in relationship is by um, holding on to that unforgiveness um, that's wreaking havoc in our body, our organs and our glands. It's lowering our immune system. It's creating uh, that self-sabotage, all that, all that drama uh, when we, and you know what, we're not really taught how to forgive. Uh, and it, it's a, it can be very difficult. And uh, that's what I find with all my clients is that that's the number two things I help everyone, no matter what their problem is, from anxiety to reaching a goal to having a better marriage, it is loving ourselves first and having that self-compassion and forgiving ourselves and others. And when I when my clients do that, they they jump uh, you know quantum leaps in their life in reaching their goals, their dreams, and feeling happy and feeling that joy and and um, finding their 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 purpose. It just flows out of them. So a little bit more about unforgiveness. So I, I, I heard this, forgive in advance, okay? People are going to hurt our feelings. So just before you go to the family reunion, just decide I'm gonna forgive in advance. Okay, whatever happens, you're not buying it to it, you're not taking it um, personally. And that, um, you know, this is the qualities of spiritual people that I see. They, they easily forgive. They are grateful. They are positive. They have that light shining out of their hearts and their eyes. And you just want to be around that. And I want to be that. And I want to help other people be that because those are the leaders we need today. Those are the speakers and the leaders to, to shine the light. And, um, and it's possible, but we got to do, we got to do our own work to, to be able to get there. Um, all right. So the forgiveness I wanted to say is the highest form of love. It is the healing part of love. We have to learn the, uh, the art of forgiveness. And when you forgive, really, really forgive, you know, I'll, I'll have people and they say, Oh, I had this happen to me. Oh, I forgave. Well, there's many levels and layers. You can forgive on one, but there's more, there's more, there's more because we're holding on to that, that pain still inside. I mean, I, I still go through this and I'm like, no, I forgive and I easily forgive, but I found that I was still holding on to 
the hurt. There was still a little piece and it was wreaking havoc in me, um, that self-sabotage again. So uh, when you forgive, you strengthen your immune system, you uh, improve your health and uh, your, your spiritual immune system. So we have to, if you want peace, if you want health, if you want happiness, forgive and get help doing it if you are struggling. So I had one client that um, came to me and she um, had a difficult relationship with her mother. Um, it, you know, she had some resentment, some anger, and that her mother didn't show up in the way that she wanted, that there was some real disappointments and frustrations. And so we worked on that. She said that's what she wanted to work on. We worked on that, letting go, the forgiveness piece. And within a few weeks, domino reaction happened for her and the relationship with her daughter improved in fact she had the best uh relationship with her daughter like a heart to heart opening up that uh she hadn't had in such a long time and then um she landed a big time client and uh then she got engaged and this was all in a few weeks of her working on the relationship the pain the past uh, with her mother and letting that go forgiving herself, forgiving her mother, and all these miraculous things are happening. Now, the funny part about getting engaged was that her boyfriend had been proposing to her, and she kept saying no. And then after this, she realized, well, I'm going to say no, I love him. He's the right one. And then it was just so joyful to be able to attend their wedding and to see the power and the miracle of forgiveness. So I think I, I'm going to get into the soulmate business because my clients are finding their soulmates. It's really exciting. Uh, we, you know, we work on the, 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 the relationship with their parents, the relationship with their past relationships, their current relationships, their own relationships, and then they're finding their soulmates. And so I, I just, I, I'm just in love with helping people do that. So uh, everything happens to us is a gift. And if we haven't been able to feel the gratitude for that gift, it just means we haven't completely unwrapped the gift because there is beauty in our pain. And I'm just going to open up. Is there any other questions or comments before I wrap up today? I do like what you said just now, though, about the, you know, the beauty in our pain. It gives us an opportunity to sometimes, whether we like it or not, so many circumstances are, especially right now, you know, as we kind of touched on, but just, just the things that are happening around us that are out of our control, whether it's from childhood or the current situation, you know, the present things that are happening, um, the pain that some of us are feeling through different, you know, things that are happening, building you know, I kind of joke, but you know, sometimes it's in all seriousness, building character, building empathy versus just sympathy in us. Um, and that's where our true beauty comes from because we've been through, you know, um, these things and we've hit certain milestones because we've overcome, you know, circumstances and hardships. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, definitely to be something to be said for the beauty, uh, beauty from pain, beauty from ashes, literally. Yes. You know? <laughs> I know that's, I mean, I don't, you know, it's, I've had, you know, a friend who, you know, people have lost their homes and people have lost their animals and people have lost their, their things that are, that were important to them and, uh, but they have their lives, you know, and, but I still feel bad sitting here saying, oh, but there's beauty in this or there's beauty in that, but just trying to encourage people in the same way, trying to let them know that, you know, they will come through this it doesn't feel like it right now we will come through this we will figure it out you know and it's a reminder of what's most important you know reprioritizing the most important things in life because we can get off and think this is important but you know there are things uh, but it's the family it's our relationships that and that and it serves tragedy serves as that wake-up call to be grateful for all that we have so my mission is to empower entrepreneur women on unleashing their voice, speaking their truth, and knowing and feeling their self-worth. And so I, I just wanted to leave a little gift. Uh, 
and that's on my website, is a guided meditation that's helping to let go and empower you. And that's at uh, carolynkmcgraw.com. And I also have a book there, a free book for you, uh, Enlightening Ways to Build a Prosperous Business. And so um, I've created a, a self-sabotaging uh, program, 30 Days to Overcome Self-Sabotage, and uh, break through that uh, permanently so you can reach your goals and dreams faster and easier. And so please uh, check out the Hope and Wellness Events Facebook page. Join in for our event Saturday at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we'll give some inspiration and some tips on managing our emotional well-being. Thank you so much, Carolyn. You're amazing. Thank you. And uh, you, this has been just so needed today. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted just to let everybody at Empower Hour know real quickly a couple things. Uh, first of all, our Empower Hour book came out, which is uh, Empowered Women with Empower... Uh, no, no, no. Empowered Women of Empower Hour. It's officially available on Amazon around the world. So if you'd like to get your copy today, all uh, proceeds go directly to the nonprofit, The Butterfly Element, that helps women and children on the streets, as well as free coaching for everything from uh, youth and children to business and many other things too. Um, and then um, I also wanted to uh, just let you guys know, we're also putting kind of a, a random kind of thing put together real fast um, next Monday at 12 um, uh, p.m noon at noon um there is a there's going to be a mom call and it's purely just it's nothing about business or anything like that it's purely just you know what like i need someone to talk to i need a shoulder to cry on i need somebody to um to be there for me and uh and so i'm seeing a massive need for this amongst a lot of moms right now and so anybody who wants to join us please do it's 100 percent free we're not going to talk business it's purely just how how can we help you and we're there for you all right. Uh, we hope that you're going to have a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend. And, uh, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye, guys. All right, ladies, did you want to say anything else?